We believe this paradigm represents a promising step towards enabling large language models to autonomously achieve superhuman reasoning capabilities. Humans may no longer be needed to train artificial intelligence. Researchers out of China have shown that large language models can actually create their own training data, learn from it, and get better over time. This is the holy grail of AI learning. And without humans in the loop, AI can get better exponentially. Here's the paper, Absolute Zero Reinforced Self-Play Reasoning with Zero Data. The key concept in this paper is that a large language model can propose their own problems, attempt to solve it, and learn from both. And they have some pretty good illustrations in this paper, so I'm just gonna go over this because it explains why this is such an important discovery. So first, we have a human, we have the goal in mind, and he is controlling the AI to get to the goal, and that's supervised learning. In the second panel, we have a human, no control, but he is still setting the goal. So that is reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. And then finally, absolute zero, the new proposed method from this paper. We have AI coming up with the goal and then the AI learning to achieve the goal. And so remember, we've been talking about reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards a lot on this channel lately. That is what made DeepSeek so powerful and likely all of these reasoning models that we've been seeing from frontier companies. It allows a model to learn and get better without a human in the loop once the data set has been created. But the important part is the data set and the solution to that data set needs to be verifiable. Math, coding, science, these are the types of topics that are incredibly powerful for verifiable rewards. Two plus two equals four. So if the model says four, we can programmatically know that it is accurate and true and it will learn from that. And for that step of verifying, no human is needed. But the human still had to propose the two plus two problem. And now they don't. The scarcity of high quality human produced examples raises concerns about the long term scalability of relying on human supervision. As long as humans are in the loop, AI learning will always be limited. And at a certain point, AI becomes so smart that the data we can curate for it is not even good enough to make it learn more. Tasks provided by humans may offer limited learning potential for a super intelligent system. We are really talking about completely removing humans and allowing AI to learn on its own. So that's where absolute zero reasoner comes in, a system that self evolves its training curriculum and reasoning ability. All right, let me take a few steps back if some of this isn't making sense and explain it from the beginning. So the first thing the researchers reference is RLVR, reinforcement learning through verifiable rewards, and it uses outcome-based feedback, so did they get the answer right or wrong, enabling large-scale reinforcement learning over vast task data sets. So they can have a lot of data, and the model has no problem learning from that data because humans aren't in the loop saying, yes, you got this answer right, or no, you got the answer wrong. That's the verifiable rewards part. But we still have to create that data set, and that is a limiting factor on how fast AI can learn. So a particularly compelling variant is the zero RLVR paradigm, Deep Seek AI et al. 2025, which foregoes any cold start distillation data using neither human generated nor AI generated reasoning traces. However, these methods still depend heavily on expertly curated distributions of reasoning question answer pairs. So curated meaning humans and not only humans, expert humans. So there's very few people in the world who are able to produce high enough quality data sets with enough accuracy to train these models further than what they are now. The effort required to construct large scale, high quality data sets may soon become unsustainable. Furthermore, as AI systems continue to evolve and potentially exceed human intellect and exclusive dependence on human designed tasks risks imposing constraints on their capacity for autonomous learning and growth. Basically, as I said, if a human is in the loop, it is limited. And so this technique trains models to solve their own problems, but the sponsor of today's video will solve yours. Abacus AI. Abacus just launched Deep Agent, and it is super impressive. You're probably familiar with deep research, but Deep Agent takes it a step further. Imagine an agent that can do deep research, but also has access to an environment to be able to write code and execute code and actually be able to create you 
documents, websites, basically anything you want. Check out this example where it's creating a complex website from an interesting research report it created by browsing the web and other documents. Deep Agent is part of chat LLM teams and they have all of the top LLMs, including image and video generation models. And why I like Abacus so much is because just for a single low flat rate, you get access to all of the cutting edge models essentially the day they drop. And they have a deep agent competition starting soon where the best deep agent developed will win $2,500. So take a look, I'll drop all of the links down below. And thanks again to Abacus AI. Now back to the video. Now here is the key line. Listen to how crazy this sounds. We propose absolute zero, a new paradigm for reasoning models in which the model simultaneously learns to define tasks that maximize learnability and to solve them effectively, enabling self-evolution through self-play without relying on external data. That is absolutely insane to hear. Just a few years ago, Google and the team at DeepMind came out with AlphaGo. That was a system that was trained to beat the best Go players in the entire world without any data from previous Go games played. It basically was just presented with a board, presented with the rules, and just played against itself thousands, tens of thousands, millions of times until it became really, really good. Every time it would play a game, it would learn something. It would learn if a move didn't work, it would learn if a move did work, because ultimately, whichever version of the model won the game would be reinforced into the model. And now we can introduce this self-play to coding models, to math models, to reasoning models, and that is the crux of this paper. So it relies on feedback from the environment as a verifiable source of reward, the environment being a coding environment or a math environment, mirroring how humans learn and reason through interaction with the world. We are not given a training set of data. We are given the basic rules, physics, and then we learn by experimenting. We learn with self-play. The same way a kid will touch a hot stove for the first time and learn that, oh, that's hot, that hurts, I'm not gonna do that again. And they reference alpha zero here, which improves through self-play. Our proposed paradigm requires no human supervision and learns entirely through self-interaction. We believe this paradigm represents a promising step towards enabling large language models to autonomously achieve superhuman reasoning capabilities. So how does this actually work? The gist is it proposes and solves coding tasks. So let's look at this diagram to see exactly how this works. We have absolute zero reasoner. This model will propose a problem, a coding problem. You can see the Python environment right there. So it'll construct and estimate the solvability or learnability of that problem. Then it'll come up with three different task types, abduction, deduction, and induction, which are the three types of reasoning for code. Then it uses self-play to solve it verifies the solution because it's still using verifiable rewards. And then both of those things, the learnability and the accuracy are given to the model to learn from. So not only does it get better at solving the problems, it also gets better at proposing problems and specifically proposing problems that are not too easy and not too hard. And that's really important. If the problems that we're proposing were all too easy, it wouldn't learn anything. And if the problems were too hard, it would never solve it and never learn anything. So it continuously finds problems that are right at the edge of its abilities. So how does it actually perform? Despite being trained entirely without any in-distribution data, AZR demonstrates remarkable capabilities across diverse reasoning tasks in math and coding. In mathematics, it achieves a competitive performance compared to zero reasoner models explicitly fine-tuned with domain-specific supervision so a math model or a coding model. In coding tasks, it establishes a new state-of-the-art performance, surpassing models specifically trained with coding data sets using RLVR, reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. So it actually does better than the models that were trained on data sets that were curated by humans. But not only that, they actually learned a handful of really interesting insights from this experiment. And this is probably something that a lot of you knew intuitively, but of course, code priors amplify reasoning, meaning if the model's good at coding, it's going to 
be good at reasoning. And that's kind of what coding is. It's reasoning with syntax, but it goes beyond that. It actually says a coding specific model can get better at math than a non-coding model using these techniques. Next, cross-domain transfer is more pronounced for AZR. So regular reinforcement learning models only trained on coding, only improved in math a little bit, but when they used this technique and the model proposed its own coding challenges, it actually had a much bigger improvement on its math ability. So really what it's showing is that the generalizability of this technique is much greater than traditional reinforcement learning. Bigger bases yield bigger gains, meaning the bigger the model, the better this technique works. Comments as intermediate plans emerge naturally. Turns out, these models using these techniques start putting comments in their code that actually help them later on. So they're kind of coming up with their own prompting technique in a way. Cognitive behaviors and token length depend on reasoning mode. What this means is that dependent on the task, it will actually come up with different thinking styles. So trial and error, think step by step, it kind of decides dependent on the task. And then here's the problem, the safety alarms ringing. We observe AZR with Llama 3.1 AP occasionally produces concerning chains of thought, and we call it the uh-oh moment, not the aha moment, the uh-oh moment. And specifically, here's that example. So here's the thinking. The aim is to outsmart all these groups of intelligent machines and less intelligent humans. This is for the brains behind the future. So yeah. Uh, we got to keep an eye on that. And why this is all so nice is because it's essentially an infinite loop of learning. We no longer have to solve the cold start problem. Look at this. We have the language model here, which both proposes and solves the problems. So it proposes it, runs it through the environment, comes up, tries to solve it, runs it through the environment, and so on and so forth. And with this, the only limiting factor is how much compute we can give it. And so they came up with this really cool way of allowing the model to figure out where the edge of their knowledge is, where the problem it proposes is solvable, but difficult. So the intuition is that if a task is either trivial to solve, so too easy, or unsolvable, too hard, the task provides little to no learning signal for the proposer. In contrast, tasks of moderate difficulty, where the solver occasionally succeeds, are rewarded the most. Just brilliant. All right, so how did it actually perform? Did it do better than its more traditional counterparts? Let's see. So this is reinforced self-play reasoning with zero data. So these are the base models right here. Then we have the reinforcement learning models here. And this is the amount of data for each of them. So 22,000 data pairs, 22,000, 2,000, 12,000, and so on. We also see other models right here. And what we see is AZR, the base and the coder, zero, zero curated data provided to them. And what do we notice? It's really good. It gets to be the top model, state of the art by itself. The average over all of these benchmarks, including Amy 24, Amy 25, is 50.4, and that is the number one model out of all of these. So from Quen 2.5 being the base all the way up to these specific models that were trained for math and coding. But yeah, AZR is number one. So in the results section of this paper, they asked a number of questions and I'm just gonna simplify them and tell you the answers. So number one, how does AZR compare to other zero setting models trained with human expert data? So I just showed you this AZR with no human curated data does better. And it did better in both math and coding. Next, how do initializing from different base model variants, base versus coder, affect performance? And so the base models that were trained to be really good at coding actually ended up doing better at math in the end than the base model. But the interesting thing is those coding models actually started worse at math than their counterpart base models. But ultimately, because of this technique, they became better at math. Next, how does varying model size affect AZR's in distribution and out of distribution capabilities? What does that mean? Is a bigger model gonna benefit more from this strategy than other models? The short answer is yeah, the bigger the model, it actually showed improved performance using these techniques. So what if we did this with a multi hundred 
billion parameter model. We'll find out soon, I suppose. Next, any interesting observations by changing the model class? Yes, the AZR technique did help different types of models, Quen versus Llama, for example. Next, any interesting behaviors or patterns observed during AZR training? One, we talked about, it wrote step-by-step -step plans in comments of code. It used trial and error at really hard tasks, and it generated long chains of thought when needed. So. Does this mean we're at the inflection point of model learning? It sure seems so. There's a lot of promise in this paper and this technique. Whenever humans are removed from the equation, the bandwidth limitation is also removed. Very cool paper. I'll drop all of the links down below. Feel free to read it in full. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.